When we hear about accidents or natural disasters, however much terror they cause, we know that there is a chance of getting out alive, at least if we act quickly enough. But it's not that way with plane crashes. Most often, no one survives. Julien Kuepsche can boast otherwise, having survived a plane crash. Get ready to hear one of the most impressive survival stories of all. On December the 24th, 1971, 17-year-old Julien Kuepsche, born and living in Peru, but with German parents, would board a small passenger plane with her mother to return home. The flight was not supposed to last more than a few hours, but was delayed for seven hours in the air to ride out a storm. But they were not fast enough, because without knowing it, they entered a cloud so black that it made all visibility difficult. Julien Kuepsche was calm, because she liked to travel by plane a lot, and it was not the first time they had to go through a storm. But her mother knew something was wrong. Ten minutes into the storm, Julian and the rest of the passengers were on the ground. It was clear that they were in trouble. Suddenly, heavy turbulence caused the plane to start flailing in the air from top to bottom. The baggage compartments opened scattering clothes, suitcases, and gifts all over the plane. Later, Julianne saw several lightning strikes on the plane. The last one hit one of the engines in the wings, causing it to catch fire. Julianne took her mother's hand, but they were both too terrified to talk. The passengers were crying and screaming in dismay. After a while of complete despair, Julian's mother calmed down and said, This is the end. It's over. Julian tells us that this was the last time she heard her speak. Seconds later, the plane took a nosedive. The screams increased, but Julian only had ears for the roar of the engines. Then all sound stuck, and only the sound of the wind remained. Julian was alone, tied to her seat which was rushing down towards the jungle. Julianne lost consciousness because of the change in pressure, so she doesn't remember the impact. She later learned that the plane had disintegrated two miles off the ground, and she had survived that. But her adventure was just beginning. She woke up the next day. She had a broken collarbone and a few deep cuts on her legs, but nothing really serious. As she tried to get up, she noticed that the ligament in her knee was torn, but she could walk, and that was all that mattered. She called out to her mother, but all she could hear was the murmur of the jungle. Luckily, she had lived with her parents for a year and a half at a research station in the jungle, so she knew how to move around inside it. All she had, however, was a thin, short dress and a sandal, since she had lost the other one. Because she had also lost her glasses and could not see very well, she had to use the remaining sandal to grope her way in front of her. Several times that day, she heard rescue planes and helicopters passing over the jungle, but the foliage was so dense that it was impossible to try to communicate. Julianne knew that the jungle was home to many snakes, most of them dangerous, that camouflaged themselves with the leaves on the ground. And because she couldn't make out the surroundings, walking was an odyssey. However, she was lucky not to come across any or notice them. At one point, she found a stream where she could hydrate. Since she knew it was safer to walk on water, she followed its course. After a while, she got to where another section of the plane had fallen. There, she found a bag of candy that she devoured. But then she ran out of food, which caused her great despair for fear of starving to death. It rained most of the day. Julian said that the nights were terrible, since she barely had a coat and everything was so wet. On the fourth day, she saw some vultures in the sky. She knew then that the bodies of the other passengers were there. When she approached, she found a section of the plane with three seats and three passengers. They were upside down, so she couldn't see their faces 
but one was a woman. Julianne, crying, thought it might be her mother, but then she saw that her toenails were painted, which her mother never did. Julianne later confessed that her relief had been enormous, although she was very embarrassed to have that feeling. As she continued on her way, she stumbled on a muddy field, which caused her to slip and open up a rather large wound on her right arm. She was able to stop the bleeding by using part of her dress as gauze. But she knew that she would get infected if she continued in that situation for too long. Ten days after walking around and barely feeding on some insects, Julianne could barely walk. Then, when she reached a river big enough, she let herself be carried away by the current. The lack of food meant that she was not fully conscious, as in a dream. She found it hard to distinguish what was real from what was not. So when she got to a boat, she thought she was hallucinating. She leaned against the hull and touched it. Then, with her words, she felt a shot of adrenaline. The boat was real and next to it was a small dock with a path that went into the jungle. On the dock, there was a small boat engine and some gasoline next to it. There, she used the gasoline to disinfect her right arm wound, which was already riddled with worms. When she followed the trail, she found a cabin, where she decided to spend the night. In the morning, she heard the voices of several men, who quickly took her away and brought her back to civilization, to her father. On January the 12th, the body of her mother was found. Julian knew then that she had also managed to survive the fall, but because of her injuries, she had died 10 days later in the jungle.